Hello, hello, I am Heather, AKA Planner Mumsy. Join me for an update on my current fountain pen collection and what 10 pens I would purchase again. Stay tuned. Hey y'all, so I thought I would do a different kind of video, kind of fun for me, where I can share with you guys my current fountain pen collection. These are pens that I've collected over a number of years now. I probably started in fountain pens, I don't know, back in, say, 2017 or something like that. So not terribly long, you know, five or six years at the most. And this is sort of what I've amassed over that time. I have had some other pens, but I have sold them and I'm actually not putting the pens in this pile that I do plan on selling, but there's really only a few anyway. Let's get to it. So basically this video is like a compilation of all of the pens that I have. I'm not going to get into great detail about every single pen or else this would be an hour long video. I'm kind of, I kind of broke them up into categories and we'll talk about that as we go. Let's actually start all the way over here. So I'm going to move some of these pens over and they're going to try to roll off my desk <laughs> and we're going to just look at these and I am going to adjust the camera and zoom in for you guys so you can see pretty much just this batch of pens. There we go. Now these are, and also I'm going to preface this with, I am going to say things wrong <laughs> because I'm terrible at pronouncing love these little Kaweco pens. These are little pocket pens and um, you can basically take that back off. You can see how like small and simple they are and you can get a lot of these pens for under $30. If you were to ask me Heather, what is the first fountain pen that you would purchase for me to try out? This would be it 100%. I do recommend going with like a broad or I have a double broad because I like my writing to be super wet. Um, but I do recommend slightly larger nibs with this pen because it just helps the ink flow a little bit better with this one. But as you can see, I have a number of these and um, this is actually the newest one. I have not even inked this girl up yet, but these ones that are metal are a little bit more pricey, but you can hear they're and they're a little bit heavier too, but obviously they're purple and so you can see why it is that I purchased these, but definitely one of my favorites. You can sometimes purchase the pen with like a clip as a kit, but for the most part, you have to purchase the clip separately just as an FYI so that you don't think that this actually comes with the pen when you get it. Generally, the clips are anywhere between six and ten dollars, depending on the type of clip that you purchase. So I have six of them and they range from medium to double broad. All right, moving on. Then I'm going to get into these two pens. These are Pilot Decimos and they are in their Vanishing Point collection. I only have two. These are definitely among my favorite types of pens and I always chuckle about it. The reason why is because ever since I was a kid, I've really loved the click of a pen <laughs> and this Pilot Decimo has just an amazing click and I absolutely love that. So they're just a very convenient fountain pen where you don't have to worry about the cap. You literally just click it and you will see when I click 
basically the nib pops out there and I'm not sure if my camera will pick it up because my camera is not a super fan of zooming, but you might see it as I, yeah, you can see the door right there open and shut as I click it and then it comes out and it goes back. Definitely among my favorite um, Pilot Decimo. Both of these are in mediums and I would like to try abroad, but I never, um, this one wasn't available in that and I really didn't know what I was doing when I bought this one, <laughs> but I do still really like it and they are among my favorites. Okay, next is a fairly new company for me um, and these are Novelors and they used to be called See, I've already forgotten what they used to be called, Narwhal, but now they are Novelor, and um, I really do like these. This was one that came from a pen show. I talked about it in another video, and this is a Nautilus, and I would say right now, currently, Nautilus is probably my favorite that Novelor makes, and this particular one is probably in abroad. Yes, it is. And I just love it with its little rose gold trim. Super pretty. Definitely um, this one is a nice one to get into as well. As you can tell, I'm kind of going through more of the bigger named pens to start with. Now, very similar to the Novelor, and you will see what I mean is the Twisby just kind of comparing them. The Noveler is a little bit longer, but they're real similar. Um, this particular one is a Twisby 580 ALR. I like it. It's purple. Of course I like it. <laughs> um, but I'm not super thrilled about the ribbing that they put on the grip section that does tend to bug me a little bit but not terribly enough that I feel like I should sell the pen and then this particular one is a diamond um five 580 diamond and um this is in the rose gold trim with the white I've not even inked this one up yet y'all I'm not even gonna lie I have inked this one and these two but I have not inked this one up yet and then finally, I have the Twisby. These are both, no, this is an Echo and this is an Echo T. There's some very subtle differences between the two, the shape on the bottom. And I think that maybe the grip section's a little different. Yeah, not something you can physically tell though by me showing you. You would have to really look at those in depth. But these also are really good starter pens. You generally can get into these for under $30. So if I didn't, like if you're not a pocket pen fanatic as far as the Quaco, I would definitely recommend a Twisby Eco then um, because they're pretty cheap and they are decent little writers. So those are my Twisbys. Okay, then these are a more high-end pen. This is actually called, um, these are called Pelicans. And one is actually the 400 and I have an upgraded nib unit on it. And then the other one is an 800 and this one comes standard with that upgraded nib. These are very light pens and they're on the smaller side. If we're just comparison, comparing them with the Twisbees, the 800 is a larger of the two and you can already see how much smaller the 800 is to the Twisby Eco. Um, and then looking at the 400, even smaller than that. So if you are not really into the smaller pens, this may not be the right pen for you. 
although you can gently cap it to make it feel like a bigger pen I don't oh, I don't personally recommend doing that because you can scratch the body of the pen but you know some people are die hard um cappers and that's how they like their pens I on the other hand am not if I had to say as far as which one of these two do I like better it definitely would be this one but this one is proportionately double at least the money of the 400. Okay then I have my one-offs and that just means I only have one pen from these particular companies this one is an Esterbrook SD. This is a honking pen, <laughs> you know, um, big, big pen. I do enjoy it. I wasn't sure how much I would like it because I knew that it was definitely a bigger pen. Going back to the Twisby, you can see the size comparison. I can hardly even keep the pen in frame definitely a lot bigger and then when you're looking at comparing it to the pelican much much bigger definitely love the esterbrook um honestly sometimes i feel like maybe the weight helps balance my writing better definitely like it this is definitely not going to be my last esterbrook it just happens to be right now because i'm trying to be more picky about my pen purchases okay Next is similar in shape, just much smaller in size to the SD is the Leonardo. And this particular Leonardo, I think is like Fiori or something like that. And um, it is weighted very nicely. I love the shape of the pen and the weight and just everything about it. I'm not like a huge orange fan, but I just really loved this collab and how they mixed all these colors together. It's super bright and super cheerful and I absolutely love it. Then I have a Pilot Custom 74. This is my first Pilot Custom. I do have the, um, the Pilot VP pens, but this is my first Custom 74 and super pretty. It's kind of like a lavender and dusty rose color. Again, these do tend to be lighter pens because of the material that is made. Just kind of keep that in mind if you're looking for something that's a little weightier, but Custom 74, and I do believe I have an unboxing of this one. Okay. Then I have, this is a Ferris wheel press brush pen and I like the thinness of it. And you know, you can see just grabbing the last pen, you can really see a comparison to how thin it is. I really like this one because it fits in so many like pen um, sleeves and or just like little pen holders in your planners. And I love the engraving that they do on all of their stuff. It's super cute. I am a Ferris wheel press ambassador, just so that you guys are aware, but I did purchase this with my own money before I became an ambassador, but you can use my special code that I will put in the description if you are interested in buying a pen like this for 10% off. Then, I can't even pronounce the name of this pen, but it is a sailor and it's, it was kind of like a, it was a super exclusive, but it is cute because it's purple and it has sparkles, but I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. I am not a huge fan of this pen and mostly because it's so stinking small. It's so stinking light and I have not been able to really tune this to my liking and it is a pent um, and it does have a 14 karat gold nib which generally should mean that it's kind of an upgraded pen and it should write well out of the box but it hasn't 
and quite honestly just haven't had the patience or the time to deal with this one but I'm gonna keep it because it's a bit nostalgic for me because this was literally like my first big pen purchase as far as just not cheapy pens this is one that definitely um costs a lot more money now comparing this to the custom the pilot custom 74 you can see a drastic difference in size and even comparing it to the pelican it's pretty comparable in size to the 400 so just kind of putting that out there if you are looking at any of the sailor pence that that is a possibility then i have an opus 88 really like this pen as far as writing wise goes it's a honkin pen y'all this is i think my biggest pen in my collection possibly let's compare it to the esterbrook no i guess the esterbrook's a little bit bigger but it's definitely thicker so the thickness really kind of um it just I don't know it's just so substantial when you're writing with it and it is an ink drop filler so it's a it's a bit finicky I think I've had some too many like sheening inks in here so I think it, I'm gonna try it again with just like a straight regular ink and see if I like it better then this is a Jin Hao and it's kind of like a Mont Blanc knockoff. It came in a set of three. I got it off of Etsy. Let me tell you guys, for a cheap little pen, because essentially it was like 11 bucks a piece. I think it came in a three pack. I can't remember. But um, this is a really nice writer, which I'm really surprised by that. But it's pretty substantial. And again, I kind of just like, I like a substantial pen now and again. It's not my preference, but I do, I do like it. All right, then zooming all of my bespoke pens. <laughs> All right, I'm probably not gonna super remember where each one came from. I think I can try. Um, I'm gonna pull out the ones that I know for sure where they came from and we'll kind of go from there. This pen here is from Mayfair Pens and this is called, he calls this his Eowyn pen. I do like it. It's cute, but this may be one that I sell. And here's the reason why. In order for him to make the pen the way it is, he, um, and I just mean shape wise, he threaded the pen in opposing directions. The problem with that is sometimes the cap when I'm doing this, the cap over tightens and it's a bugger to get off. Then my second problem is writing with it. As you can see, you have the step up here and then you have the threads. And unfortunately, um, my finger hits this part a lot and it's just not comfortable to write with. Super pretty pen to look at, just not my favorite writer. So I'm not really sure I would buy this particular shape that he makes again but it is all in all a pretty pen and he does make some pretty gorgeous pens then um i also have this one off this is a bespoke again as well this is a tominori studio um super super pretty urushi pen and i just need to still get a new nib for this because it came with a fine and i'm not a fine kind of gal when it comes to writing but i do love the pen it is really pretty probably first and last urushi because they are crazy money as i was filming for one i realized i had pens missing <laughs> And then I pulled this little thing out and I realized this is where I actually keep the pens that I need to clean. And I found a couple of other pens. This one is a Novelore as well, which was in this category. I totally forgot about this one, but super pretty as far as the color goes. And it's also a very good writer. Sorry about that, y'all. And then I actually have another one of these, which is kind of like the Mont Blanc dupe. I did, like I said, have a set of three. I gave the third one to my son for Christmas. 
Okay, now getting back to Scriptorium pens, these two are the Scriptorium that I had done. And my first clip pen that I had made as a bespoke pen. And then this is like a mother of pearl pen, which I absolutely love. Scriptorium has beautiful pens. She is on the pricey side and her weight was almost two years. So there's that. <laughs> then these pens are the pens that I have had made from Charlie Harvey of Wood Wonders of North Carolina. And um, these ones I absolutely love. He has done so many really pretty pens for me, as you can see. And pretty much all of these are broad nibs. You can see I have had some custom roll stops put on a couple of them. This one is an Operex. Operex pens are quite expensive because the blanks are pretty expensive but he put a little flower on there because this color is called Secura, Secura, and that is a flower. Charlie Harvey, Wood Wonders of North Carolina. Definitely recommend him for a bespoke maker. If you guys are ever interested in getting a custom pen, I, I, I just can't recommend Charlie more. <laughs> He's just really great. This is a candy nougat pen made by Little Pen Designs. Now I can tell you that he does not make the pens like this anymore because for some reason with like the threading, I guess he had a lot of issues with, with this type. And um, so he hasn't been able to make this pen again with the cover like this. He will, however, make it with say a complete top in this color or say in this color and then the body can still be in the candy nougat but i'm very thankful that i have a pen that is made in complete like this because oh y'all this is so nostalgic for me i absolutely love it okay then this is Rob Penworks. He's out of California. This is, I believe, a Midwest hybrids blank. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it does have like little butterflies on the inside. And yeah, so I like this pen. I just made some serious grave errors and used a ink that killed the pen and so this is gonna probably be forever mine because I won't be able to sell it anyway because I stained it. Ah, next up is a analog pen and absolutely love this one and again you can find him on IG but I love the clip. I love the pen. It's kind of almost like a purple but then it has like gold. So so pretty. Then I have a River City Pen Company and this is with a Mackenzie blank and it's I can't remember if it's like lavender or something like that and then the tips are Operex and super pretty and I'm not sure what the what the body style of it was but I do I really like the grip section on this one. I just love how he makes this grip section. They're very comfortable. Then this one is from Analog Pens. This is a TPC um, pen blank called Sweet Kiara. Super pretty. It's like a baby pink with gold and white and I really like this one as well. You can find Analog Pens on Instagram. Then this one is from On A Whim Woodworks and I absolutely love the pen window on this one. It is so beautiful, so beautiful. And it's super fun when you have pen uh, ink inside the converter there, you can see it and I really super like that. Then these two came from um, TPC or Tailored Pen Company and these are customs. They did a lavender and a dusty pink for me. Both super pretty. Love this company. You can literally 
send them pictures of the color blank that you want to have made and they make it for you custom. So I literally took planners that I had and sent them pictures and they made these custom based on those colors. Okay, that is it for those bespoke makers. I did want to just kind of mention these really quick. These are dip pens and these two were made from River City Pen Company. This They're made for the Kakamori nibs. But Basically this little nib comes out of this plastic piece and these are like dip pens. You can dip them into the ink. Definitely like those and this is just another nib holder. Then this particular one is a um, urban glass dip pen and it's just J Urban Jacques I guess I'm not sure how you say it but you can see the dip pen there and then this particular one is similar it's not it's it's more of a plastic but it kind of looks like a regular glass dip nib but it is plastic you can interchange these for other ones, which is just something different. I kind of like having those options. That is that. And then last but not least, just in showing you, I just recently got this. I talked about being a Ferris Wheel Press ambassador, and this is the first fountain pen that they have sent out at least since I've been an ambassador, which hasn't been that long, but I figured I would open it up with y'all and we can look at it together. It's a super pretty pick color. So this is definitely along the realm of the a similar size, just a little bit bigger than the um, Kawakos but this is in their carousel collection. And so you can just see, it just kind of snaps in and then pulls off. So another pen that you can, you know, get in for a low cost, it is super light, it is plastic. Um, it does come with a fairly nice little um, piston converter and it even has, oops, how to frame. In their converter, it even has a little ball in there, which I can't get to come off on the screen. There we go. And let's see if when I move it, you can kind of see, you can see the ball there. So that's neat because that will help like mix your pens or mix your ink in your pens when, oops, they are in there. So that's just kind of uh, a neat little addition that they did there. So those are my current pens that I have. Now, <clears throat> I did talk briefly in the intro about what 10 pens would I absolutely purchase again. And I'm going to off the cuff, like I've sort of thought about it a little bit, but I've not gotten into it like a ton. So I'm sort of off the cuff doing this. I will say absolutely I would buy a Pilot Custom VP Decimo again. I've never owned the full size. I like the Decimo because they are Decimo. They are a nice kind of compact pen. So that's definitely in my wood purchase again. Two is most assuredly a Leonardo that has been in my top favorite pens. Three has been the Nautilus, which some people, this is probably surprising a little bit, but I definitely would purchase that one again in a heartbeat, no questions asked, love that pen. Okay, then standard standby Twisby, I, will and always keep purchasing Twisbees. I like their pens. They're, they're a workhorse. Um, they're not crazy expensive. So that is definitely in my wood purchase again. 
Then the Koeko, which again is something that I have recommended to y'all as far as um, purchasing for, you know, just a cheap pen, easy to get your hands on for a lower price. So that's five. <laughs> Then if I'm looking at bespoke pens, which ones would I purchase? And we're just going to talk about them based on companies that I would purchase from. And most definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, I would purchase from Charlie at Wood Wonders of North Carolina again. And I will purchase from him again. He is definitely in one of my favorites for bespoke makers. So... Definitely one of his pens for sure. This just happens to be one of my favorites out of the ones that he has sent me, but I will be honest, for the most part, most all of his pens are my go-tos on a regular basis. Then I definitely have to say on a woodwork, on, on a whim woodworks, if I could get my tongue to speak correctly, I really have enjoyed his pen. I just think it's so pretty and it just is a really just overall good writer. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pens so far. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. I think definitely I'm going to have to say I am going to purchase another Esterbrook. Um, I've been very impressed with this one and how it writes. Yes, it is my first one and, um, but just, yeah, I really, I like it. And I definitely think I would purchase another SD again. Um, let's see. And I mean, again, you know, even if we're talking about like specific pens, I would purchase this one again. Um, I really am enjoying the Pilot Custom 74. Love this color. It writes really well. I want to say this is a medium fine nib, I believe. Definitely would purchase that again. So three, six, nine. That leaves me with one more pen. I think I definitely would have to go with the... Um, M800 in the Pelican series. Don't think I would ever purchase a um, anything under an 800 again from them just because size wise, but this pen does write flawlessly and I do really enjoy it. So those are my top 10, you guys. And I literally just kind of did that off the cuff, like really thinking, okay, which ones do I probably write with the most? and you're looking at them. <laughs> um, I have not been writing a ton with my um, Kawakos just because I haven't been putting them in my planners lately, but I do enjoy them and I do believe, you know, that those will be something that I'll continue to collect kind of here and there as new ones come out. But there they are. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe, you guys. Anytime you comment or like or any of those things on my channel, it helps me out. And I'm just trying so hard to try and grow my channel this year. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.